Hi everyone, can you hear me properly? Yes. So it's, uh, we are very excited uh, to welcome uh, you here in Paris, uh, Adam, Tamika. It's, it's a big honor uh, for, for me as a founder, for us as a company, uh, and even for our country, for the tech ecosystem, to have two of our biggest uh, partners here uh, in the city for the first ever regular season NBA game. It means a lot. Uh, for us, and um, we've tried very hard uh, to welcome you in the French authentic way. So tomorrow you have the biggest uh, strike of the year. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> no, joke aside, I hope it's not going to affect uh, the, 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 fans, the fans' experience, right? Um, uh, I also want to warmly uh, welcome your team members. Uh, so I know. Uh, Inky, uh, Josh, uh, and Q from the PA are here. And uh, yeah, congrats on your new positions, uh, by the way. Uh, a very warm welcome uh, also to Mark, uh, to Eric, Saul, Bill, Adrienne, uh, Harrison, uh, and of course, Scott. Uh, and you know, thank you for the very hard work uh, you've put in making this partnership uh, a reality. We are very excited uh, to, to see that like uh, happen. And, uh, and, and to be together here, right? So um, thank you for that. Um, four years ago, we got started here in Paris with uh, my co-founder, Adrien, with this uh, big idea that uh, we're going to democratize uh, professional sports, this big idea that we're going to allow any sports fan in the world to become uh, a team owner, be able to buy and sell players, compete in tournaments, win prizes, and at the end of the day, build a legacy. Uh, we started with football, and we have uh, great success there. Uh, and uh, of course, like building this partnership with you, with the PA, with the, the NBA, uh, has been a huge milestone uh, for us uh, as a company. And uh, more importantly, we are very excited about these early results that uh, we are seeing. The fans love the product. The fans love the NBA. Uh, the, it's, it's a resounding uh, uh, success uh, from what we, we are getting from them. They truly love it. Uh, it has been a big contribution for us as a company to reach 3 million users. And uh, it's just, just the beginning. There's much, much more uh, to come. And uh, we are very excited about what's, what's coming. And, uh, you know, as, as I said, we, uh, we started in Paris, and we have one leg in Paris. Uh, and uh, we now have this second leg uh, in the U.S. Uh, with uh, our U.S. office who is uh, watching us uh, today from there. Uh, it's now half the company there, and uh, of, of course, very important to us. Um, and um, I, I love to say to, to uh, our team members that we have these two legs, and um, I, I like to think about this company as taking the best of both cultures and both countries, the creativity that we have here in France, the engineering talent, uh, and of course the marketing genius uh, that we have in the US, the business sense, the global ambitions, uh, and that's, that's how we're going to build the biggest brand in the world of sports, because this is nothing else than our ambition, and we are just at the beginning, but we'll get there. Um, so yeah, that's for the uh, early remarks, and. Uh, a big, big thank you to all the team that worked tirelessly to make this moment happen. As I was saying to Tamika, it's our biggest and first big event here uh, in the office, and we, it has been lots of work, uh, and of course, lots of work building and improving and growing every single day our Sora and Beer products. Again, just getting started, but I know there's a lot of work that is uh, be put uh, every single day to make it the best uh, entertainment experience in the world of basketball. So thank you, thank you to our team, um, and um, I think we're gonna get started. Uh, and um, my first question uh, for both of you uh, is, um, what in particular uh, attracted uh, the NBA and the NBPA to Soria, uh, and what are you most excited uh, about in terms of growth and partnership opportunity for us? Please. Great. Well, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for having us. And the office is beautiful. I also know that we are clearly in France because they quieted just as we got on the stage. That does not happen in the US, so we are grateful for that. Um, 
beautiful space. And, and as you talk about sort of why we joined into this, I think the reason for us is we were looking for a true partner, right? You know, as we talked about sort of reimagining the possible for us at the PA, we are no longer just a union, right? So it was really important to us to think beyond what we had been thinking historically. And we saw that in Soraya. First of all, it's something that you all had been doing and doing exceptionally well here in Europe. And we wanted to make sure that we were a part of that and that we had a very experienced partner who would sort of go on this journey with us. And we have reimagined the possible together. I think it has been phenomenal, to your point. You know, everyone is loving it. We love that KD is the number one player already. Um, so it has just been an exciting venture. And that's part of why we started. We also know Serena Williams, who I, I spoke to on several occasions, who was very influential in our decision-making process. She talked about the company, the growth, where she expected it to grow, the power of diversity, quite frankly, and how pivotal that was to the strength of Sorare. So we were incredibly excited to be a part of that. So thank you. Thank you, Tamika. Welcome. Well, thank you. I agree with everything Tamika said. And also, uh, Nico, thank you for um, this introduction, the partnership to your colleagues in New York, to ours here. Um, this is an effort that could have only happened with the involvement of all of us. And I think for your, you know, our version of Serena was Mbappe, who uh, also mm -hmm. very much encouraged us to enter into this partnership. So it's truly a community of some of the best in the world of uh, sport, of athletes who believe in your company. I think for us, you know, you brought um, to us in our Players Association this unique combination of collectibles in, in, in a digital world. And I think that we had, had experience, I, I think, in a, in a more traditional way yeah. in both those worlds. Yeah. But I think you brought to us um, a very unique proposition, one in which we saw an opportunity to grow our fan base in a truly global manner. And I think it, it, part of also, I'd say, that attracted us to so rare um, especially was really the, the same point you made, Nico, to us, I think a lot of our opportunity here in France is based on this unique marriage yeah. of the, I would say, the, the entrepreneurial zeal that you'll see in the United States and a sort of a track record of innovation, but brought to bear, you know, with you and your colleagues in a French culture you know, with um, top-notch technology, also um, a, a, a history of, of being leaders um, in, in, in many different industries of, you know, world-leading change. And so it's, it's fascinating to me, and, I, I, and it relates even to larger opportunities we feel that we have around basketball in France that, um, you know, with, you know, your, the leader of your country sort of I know in sometimes controversial, but bringing more of an entrepreneurial focus yep. to business here, that you know, it's, it seems like a, an opportunity really to do some things in Europe that we honestly have been struggling with for many decades now, that we, we marvel at the success of soccer here in Europe, of France in particular, you know, and, and what you've managed to do with your national team. And, We'd like, we, you know, we recognize that the, the two largest sports are clearly soccer and basketball, but soccer is bigger than yep. basketball right now. And so we see enormous opportunity to begin to close that gap. Yeah, thank you. Thank We're you looking for your... forward to the court here soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come. It's going to come. Thank you for your trust. Thank you. Tamika has a court in her office. I don't. You don't. I know. <laughs> we, we have decided. I'm looking actually, for our yeah. court to our court as yeah. well. <laughs> We've decided that he has a court, we have a court, Adam doesn't have a court. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, my next question, and you touched a bit about this, Tamika, so I don't know if you, you want to add anything, but um, I know it has been our partnership, one of the first items in your agenda when you, you jumped into uh, your leadership position. And um, so, and, and, and so thank I you called for- called you and said we have to get this <laughs> <Yeah>. done. <laughs> Several times, actually. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, uh, and, and thank you for making us a priority in, in, in this, you know, like early times for you. Um, so, yeah, we, I, I think the audience is, is curious to know, like, uh, like your kind of selection process. So you mentioned Serena, you mentioned uh, the true partners. Is there anything else you, you yeah, know, so you, you want to add there? Absolutely. So when we were talking about kind of this reimagine the possible, obviously really looking at business opportunities. So Josh and Inky and Q had really been focused on sort of where are our bigger opportunities? Where should we be looking to grow? And in particular, global was a big, you know, prong in yep. terms of things that we wanted to make make sure that we were accomplishing. And this was certainly a way to sort of capture all of those things. So to Adam's point, certainly technology for us is where the future of basketball is. Yep. And appreciating that, one, we had to make sure that we were doing that with a player who had actually done that before, who yep. was successful at doing that, which you all had obviously done. We wanted to make sure that we had the relationship because yep. you know people will tend to do business with people they like before yep. anything else. And we really looked, seemed very similar in terms of our value system. Yep. And what we considered to be important. And that was critically important for me, particularly in those earlier days, aside from Adam's calls. Um, and then we also were looking for who, you know, who does it make sense to do that with? How can we make sure that we're showing up in the global marketplace in a way that we want to be represented? And certainly we were sure that that would happen and we are seeing that come to fruition. Thank you, thank you, Tamika. Uh, so Adam, we know the league has been on the forefront um, of innovative partnerships. Uh, what are some of the key benefits uh, you believe we can bring to the sport? So I think both of you mentioned the, the global audience that we have more than 180 countries and yeah, is there anything else you'd like to add there? Uh, I'll add that, again, what um, these sort of digital collectible opportunities create are ways for fans who don't get to experience the games yep. firsthand. Yep. Um, and our games, of course, with the rare exception, playing as we are here in Paris on Thursday, but the vast majority of our games are in the United States or Toronto, Canada. And so 99 plus percent of our fans will never have the opportunity to meet an NBA player, to attend an NBA game in person. And so for us, we look for ways that the rest of the world can then engage directly yeah. with our players. And I think that you and your colleagues, again, through these digital collectibles, have come up with a way where you feel a sense of ownership, as you said earlier, where you feel a direct connection to these players and these teams in a way I think that you can't through traditional media, which is a very passive experience. Yep. Now, that's still a very important delivery system to us for people to watch our games globally, but as we are paying more attention to this next generation of consumers, they want more of a hands-on, active um, way to engage with these leagues yep. as opposed to sort of that lean back, I'll just watch it on traditional television. And so, we marvel at this technology that you created, and we think it's early days. Yep. You know, where, in essence, I mean, you said it earlier in terms of ownership, that fans around the world, you know, 880 countries plus, can feel, I have a direct connection yep. to that league. Yep. It's, 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 I'm part of it. I'm an investor in it. Yep, yep. It's something that I can carry with me. That's something I can keep. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's, tried and true, it's about creating engagement, about that direct connection between players and teams, a league, and its fans. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I, I think the, the, the next question is for you, Tamika. Uh, NBA players today are global cultural icons. Uh, what potential uh, do you see for Soren uh, to help you find a connect fans around the world with some of the favorite players and discover new ones. I know we've been discussing like different creative ideas like to like strengthen this relationship that uh, Adam was mentioning and yeah, do, do you have like ideas or, or, or do you think or things you'd love to see to, to see us developing? Yeah, so you know one of the things we talked about when we were looking at reimagining the possible, first of all, being able to play here is huge for yeah. us, right? Because to Adam's point, it does connect the fan with the player. The other is really seeing our players beyond the game of basketball, 
-hmm. right? We know that our players are entrepreneurs. We know that they're fathers. We know that they're spouses. And so to tell a bigger story, so what's their and, as you and I have talked about, what else is it about the player that we want to make sure that the fans are seeing? So the entrepreneurial spirit that you all bring to the table, we want them to see our players in that same way. They are global. We have 25% of our league now is made up of, of international players. And it's important for them to see that. It's important for them to appreciate the diversity that that brings to the table in terms of the cultural experience. Yep. So making sure that that's coming across in the game for us is critically important. Cool. Uh, so let's talk about Paris and France a bit now. The whole country is truly buzzing about this game tomorrow. Uh, maybe can you tell us uh, why you chose France and Paris uh, to host a regular season NBA game? Other than Tamika said she loves Paris. <laughs> uh, Shopping. You know, um, it, you know, first of all, you know, outside of North America, we have more players right now uh, from France than any other country. I mean, there's a great tradition of basketball being played here. Um, we have been playing games in France for a long time. I mean, I think back on 25 years ago, you know, when I was with the league, it was when Michael Jordan was here, when many who saw The Last Dance, that's when the, that documentary began um, in that fall of 1997. Um, you know, I'd say we, we, we've received tremendous support from the business community, which is part of it, to come here, and then from the sports ministry. Um, you know, President Macron personally has, um, you know, ex expressed strong support for hosting um, big events here. I see part of our selection process was thinking about the lead-in to the Paris Olympics, where we know basketball, men's and women's, plays a huge role um, in, in those summer games. Uh, so, I, you know, so for us, it was just a natural. And I, I'd say, I mean, there's no question that in asking our teams to take from a competitive standpoint is not um, a break they necessarily want to, to have because it sleep cycles, et cetera, move, moves them off their routine. But it's a much easier conversation when you say, can you come to Paris? <laughs> you know, and, and I know I've seen um, one of the teams is staying in my hotel, and I've seen um, lots of kids and family members who are using this occasion to come together and while um, you know, the players are busy, frankly, you know, I training and, and, and working and playing while they're here, that it's wonderful um, for their families to get to experience uh, Paris as well. So it's, it, it seems to me it's a, it's a combination of, of all kinds of wonderful factors. And, and I'll just end with, you know, when you talk about Nico, about all the buzz, you know, we have an NBA All-Star game. I mean, this year it's going to be in Salt Lake City in February. But these regular season games in Europe are as close to a European all-star game as we can have because people can plan in advance yeah. around it. They know we'll be here. They know the teams that are coming. And a city like Paris with you know, incredible hotels and restaurants and facilities and, and, and a first-class arena, it means that our business partners, so rare included, um, who are based in Europe can plan to come here, have meetings with the Players Association, with the league, use it for social occasions, Again, the last time we played in Paris was essentially right before the pandemic. I feel now we're coming out of the pandemic. Many people haven't seen each other in a long time. So it, although it's at the end of the day, it's a regular season game on the schedule, it takes on much more significance for all of us because of, of all this event, thank you, and, and all the activities around it. It makes it truly special for um, particularly our partners and our fans to be able to gather here. Excellent. Adam did want to say that it's because it's Men's Fashion Week and he didn't. That's know true. That. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, my team was on me, like so that I dress accordingly. I'm so embarrassed to, to say I didn't know that. But, uh, <laughs> you can, as you can tell. <laughs> but. Um, okay, so like, do, do you have in mind like uh, other countries to, to outside of France uh, to to develop uh, or regions you you're focused on uh, at the moment? Sure, I'll, I'll start. Um, well, one region in particular, I mean, we, we certainly have spent a lot of time in the rest of Europe, particularly Southern Europe, which is a hotbed of basketball. But in terms of regions, we are very focused on the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as you know, we launched a new league there three years ago, Basketball Africa League. Um, Deputy Commissioner Mark Tatum is here, who's, who's spent an enormous amount of time working on 
um, that new league. It's, uh, we see it as an opportunity, not just to continue developing basketball, but as an economic engine uh, throughout the continent. Um, NBA basketball is already very popular across the continent. And interesting um, stat, 10% of our current players, we have 450 players in this league, so roughly 10% were either born in Africa or one of their parents was born in Africa. So we have this strong connection um, to Africa already. And I'll mention um, President Macron, when, when he was in Rwanda three years ago, he was visiting with President Kagame, who is, had been the president of the African Union, but he happened to be there when our playoffs were beginning for our Basketball Africa League in Rwanda, so he attended mm -hmm. um, uh, one of our first playoff games there. And I know there's a very strong connection between economic uh, development here in France and in Africa. So it, I think that connection in particular um, is, is top of mind you know, as we're here now. Thank you, Adam. And I know, as Adam mentioned, even Basketball Africa League, obviously they had their combine here earlier in the week, which is a really big deal. Yep. Um, I think that has been significant. I think also for us, we're sort of guided a little by what our players are looking to do. So yep. as you all know, many of our players spend a lot of time here, particularly in the off season, whether it's from a philanthropic perspective or whether they're training here. So we had an, our event in Spain and where we actually had our players here doing their performance labs where they had a chance to spend time in country doing these things, as well as One Court Milan, yeah. where they were being educated. So it really is an opportunity for our players to really expand their role in the things that are significant to them. So I, I think it just makes sense that we continue to move in that direction. Cool. Um, so I have, I have to, to ask this question, and you're going to have it like lots of time during your uh, trip in Paris. What can Victor uh, Wembanyama, of course, uh, bring to the NBA and NBPA from a sports, but also for you know from a marketing perspective. And what yeah, what, what are you expecting for such a hot prospect to join the league? Uh, you know, I'm actually going to keep it short on Victor because I think, in fairness to him, an 18-year-old you know young man, I don't want to put too much pressure on him before he comes into the league. There's no question. Many of my colleagues have seen him play in person. And the NBA teams have been scouting his games. He came over and played in Las Vegas with our team Ignite from our G League. And I've always only heard the most fantastic things about him, not just as a player, but as a person. I've heard how bright he is, how, how um, committed he is to training and developing his body. So I, I, I'd only say that you know we, we have several incredible European players in the league right now. Our last few MVPs are European players. So again, without... Um, placing too much responsibility on a young player, I have no doubt that um, he will uh, be a top player in our draft. There'll be enormous attention around Victor coming into the NBA. And again, if he can come close on the court to performing the way everyone expects he will, I'm sure in France and then throughout Europe, um, he will continue to drive enormous interest in the NBA. I would agree. I think, to to Adam's point, so as a Players Association, we really are focused on the wellness of our players, so protecting, supporting, amplifying them even before they join. And so in Victor's case, we have certainly spent some time with him, our colleagues have, and with his family, because it's important right now that we yeah. kind of wrap our arms around him. Yeah. It is a lot of pressure yeah. for someone of his age to yeah. come in. I mean, everyone has already said how amazing he is. Um, but at the same time, we appreciate that it is a huge transition. Yeah. And so we want to make sure as a union that we're there to make sure that he's protected. And so that's critically important. I think also to Adam's point, from an international perspective, we have many international players, right? And so making sure that they're kind of a part of his transition as well will be significant because they are going to be looking at each other in terms of best practices. But we have learned just from our international players now to, to his point around you know our MVPs the last four years have been in international players. And what we've seen is that it, it has reimagined the game of basketball, right? More into this po positionless basketball that we hadn't been seeing historically. And so I think we'll continue to see that when Victor's here as well. 
Yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah, that's amazing. And yeah, like Europe uh, continues to be the hotbed for uh, basketball talent. So you, uh, I, you, you were mentioning like uh, MVPs coming from Europe. And so yeah, right now you have Luca, you have Jokic, you have Yanis, you have lots, lots of them. So you mentioned it's uh, they are reinventing the sports, uh, the sport itself. And like, is there anything else that you see changing, uh, or you know, that European players bringing uh, to to the sport, to the league, to to the players? Well, you know, one thing that we've been talking a lot about is an in-season tournament. Yeah. And I think that's a concept that really comes from European soccer, this notion that there are other cups yeah. to play for throughout the season. And I think initially um, it was many of the international players, as we were talking about ways to continue to build interest in the league, we're saying this is something we do in Europe. It takes nothing away from winning the ultimate championship, yeah. but it creates um, more games of consequence during the regular season. Yeah. So I'd say that's an example of something yeah. that the European players have brought to the NBA. Very interesting. And just from a global perspective, right, we all appreciate at the moment in which you are bringing cultures together, right, yeah. and adding the diversity, it's going to be better. Yeah. Just in yeah. and of itself. And so what we have seen is that it has been more exciting. It has had more of a global reach. And for us, I think that's the ultimate goal, is we want to spread the things that we have historically done well in the US. We want to make sure that we're doing that throughout the world. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for the amazing conversation. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be uh, on this journey with you and uh, your, your team members and the World Solar team. I have one last question for you. Uh, it's, it's an easy one. Uh, <laughs> I want to put you on the spot in front of this Parisian audience uh, and ask you who's your favorite French athlete of I all go time? First. I you go, go first. <laughs> <laughs> all eight of them that are active players right now. Uh, we have, as Adam mentioned, have had 40 or so um, that have been within the league, but they are phenomenal. So I enjoy watching all eight of them. <laughs> All right, I'll, go, I'll then give a more direct answer. Tony, <laughs> Tony Parker, you know, who, um, you know, uh, uh, at this point an NBA legend, uh, four-time champion, uh, you know, former finals MVP, um, multiple-time all-star, and was just nominated to the Basketball Hall of Fame. And as I understand it, would be the first French player who would ever be inducted into the Hall of Fame. We yep. assume that will come next. So um, hope to see Tony on this trip. But... He's, I think he's made a huge difference, both in brought um, his unique style of play to the NBA and in driving additional interest um, yep. here in France. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Tamika. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Adam. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.